How many dogs have you got? I got two, two big ones. Wait, so what, what kind of dogs are they? Uh, they're just two big ones, two, res two rescue dogs. Oh, cool. How long have you had them for? A couple years. I had uh, got one like four or five years ago, and then the other one a year after that. A lot of work, dogs. Yeah, Mate. yeah, and they both uh, they were both kind of um, they were both about a year and a half old when I adopted them, so they came with their own set of issues. Like people gave them away because they couldn't handle them. Oh, really? So it's been interesting. Oh wow. Okay. I was gonna. Say, I was going to say um, not not as much work as children, but then maybe in this situation that's not true. They have gotten me fully convinced that children are not in my future for a long, long time, unless you know, unless there's like a very compelling woman who's like, "All right, it's time for kids." You know, yes. it's gonna take a lot of work. Like these two have demonstrated that I'm I'm pretty grateful for the free time that I do have, um, and I don't feel like I have a lot. So no, I know. Well, I mean, um, yeah. I think um, uh, women can be very convincing and compelling, <laughs> as my two children, my beautiful children, uh, is a testament to. Uh, <laughs> so um, I see you're sitting there in your studio. I can see your, your equipment behind you. Yeah. yeah. How's, how's, how's the music going? The music is going really, really well. Excellent. Um, I, yeah. What, what, what are you working on at the moment? Uh, well, so I feel a little bit weird being the ca being a case study because I feel like I might be kind of a bad sniff student or bad make music your life student. But um, but but things are going well. Um, you know, we talked about a project a while ago about me doing a party at my house, and uh, I hate to say it, I totally have not done that. Um, but I have written a lot of music, and so part of kind of what the last few months, especially, have done for me is really helped me understand where I'm at in my life and where I'm at with my music and kind of what I want out of it and how I'm going to focus over the next several years. Um, and that has been, a, has been a really major thing for me because, you know, I think I'm kind of a lot earlier on in, in my work than, than some of the other people are. And, um, and so I'm not like, I don't know that I'm, I'm going to be having lots of releases this year or something, you know, like the more I go out and, and listen to music, every time I go to the local club night, I go, man, my stuff's still not up to scratch, you know? Um, but it's motivating. And, and the big thing for me is like, I know that I'm going to be doing this 10 years from now. Right. And, and that is something that I did, I did not know coming into the course. And, and has probably been one of the biggest takeaways for me is, so I go, okay, I can, I can really focus on, I know that what I'm doing every single day is contributing, you know, to this, to this longer term plan. And, and that has been really helpful for me, I think. So, um, well, I mean, the fir first thing to say is that I don't think there is such a thing as a uh, bad start now, finish fast <laughs> student. Well, a a as long as, I mean, w when I say that, it as long as obviously the, 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 stu the person takes action, obviously, which right. is, you have taken massive action, I've seen on, on the forum. But um, where, where, where uh, so, so obviously a, a lot of the people who have done case study interviews have kind of had these extraordinary explosions in um, uh, uh, sort of productivity as you have as well <clears throat> but um, and, and also the, qu the quality of what they're doing but um, that doesn't necessarily mean that if you haven't you're a you're a bad example of, of a start and finish fast uh, person in that people sort of have, have, have as you just explained there's there's another 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 benefit to it or a lot of other benefits to it which aren't necessarily just to do with um, producing lots of music or becoming like a you know, superstar DJ or whatever it is, you, it is you want to do. So, uh, you know, this is going to be a really useful kind of example of, of, of some of the other things that happen and how, how you've approached it and what, you, what you've got from it. Um, so wh where were you with your, I mean, you hinted at it, but where were you with your music before you started the program? What, 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 you know, what, what position were you in? What were you doing? Well, I guess I have to just say, like, I was, you know, just kind of an enthusiast. Um, I'm, I probably, I started off my music production the perfect way. Uh, I downloaded, this was like three, four years ago. I downloaded Ableton Live. I made a song. I had no idea what to do. I went through the tutorials. I picked out like three or four of the instruments. You know, I made a basic drum beat, bass line, some chords, and, and that. And that was the song. And it took me a whole weekend. And I, did not eat or sleep or shower that weekend, basically. But, you know, I just kind of like, I sat down and I just got so hooked on it. And that was that. And I, you know, I didn't know anything. I didn't use any effects. I didn't have, I didn't have anything. And, um, 
but I finished it in a weekend. It was awesome. And then my mistake was I went, you know, I went online, I posted somewhere. I was like, okay, how do I make this track better? And the very first reply I got was a guy saying, Hey, awesome. You made a track. Cool. Go make another one, another one and another one and don't stop ever. And you know, had I just listened to that one post and turned off the internet at that whole point, like my whole life would be different. The whole, you know, whole music life would be different, but I'm a giant nerd and I like to know how stuff works and particularly software. So now all of a sudden I see, oh, EQs, compressors, filters, gates, like I want to know all this stuff, right? And, and kind of got, got sucked into that. Um, but I mean, I definitely didn't have any musical goals of my own, really. I just kind of, um, you know, in my spare time, I, I make stuff. Um, I never had, as a kid, I wasn't thinking that I was going to grow up and be a DJ or a rock star or anything like that. Um, I didn't even know... You know, I didn't even know that like you could be a musician as, as a profession, <laughs> like until until I was like, in high school. You know, and like kind of kind of older, because um, it was just like I listened to my parents' records and, and that was it. You know, and it just kind of seemed like this whole separate world. But um, but yeah, just kind of making stuff on my own. Um, that's I got I think on the post I could finish three or four songs in about three and a half years. And so this is where I think it's kind of funny that I say I'm a bad sniff student because the feeling's really weird because I feel like I'm still so early on um, and there's so much more for me to do. And I'm like, I'm just at the very, very beginning of this kind of journey. But in the last nine months, I finished 22 songs. <laughs> well, <there you> go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's what, that's what, why it kind of didn't compute when you said, I think I'm a bad I'm starting up for a student. I was like, hmm, that's, that's, uh, I don't quite understand that. that but, yeah, and I, and I say that because because I look at those 22 songs I did and it still feels like nothing. Now, I'm going to explain that in a second, but it's, it just feels like so little and there's so much more and, and I'm really excited for it, but it's crazy to think like how, just how massive 22 tracks is, you know, in nine months as compared to, as compared to three in, in three years, you know, and those are only the 22 tracks that I would like actually feel comfortable playing for people when they come over you know there's probably like 30 or more kind of demos yeah. um on hard drives and stuff somewhere so you know so that's kind of been the um big change it was just like i would come home from work and kind of you know work on some stuff here and there and it was fun and, and explore it and and now i it's a lot more integrated into my life um and i and i have goals for what i want to do and and i know where i want to take this yeah. i think i know i have ideas at least can I, uh, can I just um, <laughs> highlight what it was you said when you said I started in the perfect way? Um, just, just for people who are watching this who are kind of just starting out, because I just want to highlight that as being, you are right. That is, I think <laughs> anyone who has done music and who has produced music and who has become successful at music will agree with you, pretty much anyone will agree with you, that that is the perfect way. And if you keep on doing that, then you really, really can't go wrong. Um, and also your, your, what you said about, um, you know, if I'd have just turned off the internet and continued like that, things would be very different. Again, that is like such a golden piece of advice. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like that's, that's, that's the whole thing. It's, uh, it's so easy to get sucked into this kind of information vortex. Totally, it's, totally. It's, it's kind, of, kind of weird me saying that, given that I am an, inf you know, I, I, I produce information and I distribute it on, on the internet, but I'm kind of the anti-information information guy if you know what I mean um, so <clears throat> yeah so I just wanted to wanted, wanted to point that out so what, what one of the one of the other things that also out of what you said is that um, people often um, I think wait to finish things when they think what finish means is that they are happy with it mm. and mm. that is what, what you're describing in the you, you, um, you're now in a situation where you finished 22 tracks and um, before you'd, you'd finished three um, in three years and you finished 22 in, um, or even more in, in uh, nine months. The act of finishing that amount of music has meant that what was, what your goal kind of gets further away because it, your goal increases. It's almost like uh, the, more you, the, the, the more, the better you get, the, the bigger your kind of, uh, your goals get so you never actually get there but uh, and so as a result if you never actually finish it if you wait till if you wait until you've actually achieved the go you, you know and if you wait until the feeling is right 
then you'll never actually move forward. It's a constant progression. I think people call it the gap between where you are now and where you want to be. It's always, always moving, moving forward. Um, yeah, there's that. Um, there's the Ira Glass video that I think I saw yeah. on, on the forum, and you know, basically what he says is when you're doing anything creative, there's a gap between your taste and what you can actually do. Yeah. You know, you've got you've got really good taste. That's why you're doing it. And you're like, I want to make stuff. I know what sounds good, and then you make it, and you go, this sounds terrible. And like, does it sound terrible because I'm uh, in, you know, a terrible human being that is incapable of producing music ever? No, it's just like I'm not good at it. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't practiced it a lot. And and you have to make, you have to make a lot of stuff before and start closing that gap so that so that what you produce starts to get closer and closer to your taste. And finishing stuff, absolutely, it's so true. Um, like I'll always have towards the end of a track. You know, I'm getting towards the end and I start having a million ideas for what I could do. I'm like, okay, I could do this little thing, this little thing here. And it gets so overwhelming and then I just, I can't even go forward. And then I start, I was like, well, you know, there's hardly a lot of stuff here. That's why the track is almost done. <laughs> Hold on and save these ideas for later. And as soon as I finish it, now all of a sudden those ideas are free to work on for something else. And any one of those ideas can become just the kernel for a whole track and and it's it's really crazy how how often this works out and pretty much every time when i finish a track now and i listen to it there's always something in it that i didn't hear when i was working on it or didn't hear when i was mixing it but it's something i really like and it's something that i've like a kind of a sound that i've tried to go for in the past and somehow i just hit it on this one and i didn't even really realize it and now when i see like all these different tracks there, there's kind of more parts like that. There's just it's it's kind of filling out that there's a structure there, but now each little piece is getting closer and closer and closer to my taste. Right. Uh, I mean, when when you started finishing tracks, so you know you, before the program, wait well, that first weekend, totally awesome, um, and then after that, um, you got kind of sucked into the information vortex, and then found it really really difficult to finish tracks. But when you sort of started finishing tracks, you joined the program and then you started finishing tracks, there must have been a shift from that being stuck to that to the not being stuck. How did you how did you shift how how did you move from one state to another? Because I don't think we, you know that in any on, on any planet we can say that you're now stuck. Um, yeah. because you keep on posting stuff on the forum like the, yeah. you know, all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Ah, uh, it's it's weird because I like I came into this program thinking that well, first of all, I came in thinking that that you had like the little PDF on arrangement that was going to kind of solve everything. And when I was looking at like at the at at the curriculum, okay. it kind of hinting towards like getting to arrangement part. I was like, all right, this is the month where you know where Mike just kind of drops the the easy arrangement tricks to solve your life thing. And then like kind of by month three, I was like, all right, that's. That's not coming. It's not, it's not happening. Um, and, and, and so I, I sort of came in thinking that I would be able to come up with this repeatable process where it's like, all right, I sit down, I want to write a song, and I write a song, and it's just kind of that. Um, and it hasn't worked out that way for me, and I don't think it would work that way for me. And, you know, personally, I just, like, I need something new every single day. And, and I'm kind of just finding many, many different ways that I can write a track. And so, it, so it's less of thinking like, what is the way that I write a track, but say, what can I do to sit down um, and kind of set, set myself up for success so that at the end, you know, I have, I have a track, and regardless of what tools I use. And so a lot of it is kind of just setting up some constraints up front, saying like, okay, I'm, I'm going to use these. I'm going to use this drum machine and and this synth, and that's it for this track. And I could use other stuff, but just today I feel like just doing it. Um, and and then and so not really having preconceptions of what a finished track sounds like or means, or, or particularly the process for getting it done, because at least five or six of those of those finished tracks, I didn't know they were finished until like two or three months later. Um, and and I, I was like, I was just listening to him and going through and saying, okay, you know, what tracks do I have? And there was that thing that like in two or three hours, I just, you know, I put together something on, on my synth back there using its built-in sequencer and just, which doesn't even have an undo on it. 
right? So you literally have to re-record every every single track. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I go, well, I just want to have something. I just want to make a record today. And, you know, so then I start that and hit record. And then two months later, I'm listening through. I'm like, you know, that actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> it turned out that, you know, just kind of getting the levels right in the onboard mixer. And I didn't need to do anything to it. Um, and just so many moments like that. So, like, you know, out of those 20 tracks, I'd say probably 15 of them are written in totally different ways. Um, so, I don't know if that really answered your question. But. I mean, the, the, there was a few things I took out of that. I mean, one of the really big things, because I, I, you're saying so much valuable stuff here to anyone that's watching this, so I just want to point out the really valuable... You said um, when you start a track, you define what your constraints are. Now, that's like something that a lot of people don't kind of get, is that they think that more choice equals uh, more creativity. It's actually the opposite. Yeah. The more constraints you have, the more creative you're forcing yourself to be. So that's a really, really good thing to do if you want to if you want to finish music. And then the other thing that you were talking about was that um, kind of in relation to the program, or m maybe sort of more broadly with music, if you're looking for a um, set way, uh, a sort of process of finishing music, it might work, for, well, it could work for a bit to do, to do something the same way every single time. But I guarantee you, um, if you want to keep doing it in 10 years, as, as you do, that's going to get very boring. Plus, you're not going to be developing in any way which is why i don't and, and people work in different ways and want to work in different ways and that's so good <laughs> like and you look and so there's no way that you could offer something like that because you look at this community everybody's just doing so much different stuff and that's one of the so hands down for me the biggest benefit is just being involved in this community of musicians who are focused on improvement um and and, and changing what they do musically and and you know you look there and so and you got people like, you know, Steve is doing his kind of live gigs, keyboard and stuff, everything, you know, and Daz is doing like collaborations with everybody. And, you know, Ash has his algorithmic yeah, crazy. stuff going on, right? Like, so there's an infinite number of ways to, to make music. And so I like that, I think a real big part of this process for me is discovering how do I make music? and discovering how, what are the ways that I can make music because it's gonna be a little bit different for everybody. And at least for me, that's, that's one of the really exciting things about it. Yeah, and I, th I mean, I think by um, uh, discovering, uh, th one of the things about uh, te technology-based music, music made with machines, is that, um, you, I mean, you know, if you think about a band, the sound of the band is to a certain extent determined by the instruments that are in that band. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that a lot of electronic musicians don't do at first is define their instruments, define their kind of sonic, sonic palette, or even, and the process of their process for making music will, will define the, uh, the, the end result or their, or their sound. So mm -hmm. what you're describing here, as, as you say, you're kind of, you feel like you're relatively early on in your kind of journey. What you're, what you're um, sort of expressing here, I think, is that kind of journey of discovery too what will end up becoming kind of your palette you know this is how this is how I work because the process in a way um, defines the results it, it, you know in, in terms of electronic music so the way that you produce it will define the result but in order to find that that process and it could be can be a kind of a, a, a kind of a fairly broad set of processes that you choose from um, d defining what that process is is kind of what you get from finishing music as well, you know what I mean? Because you, you know you try lots and lots of different things, and you like that, and you don't like that. It also kind of gives you an arsenal to to um, to draw from. Um, you're kind of you're like building up every time you work on a track and you do something new. You, you you build up new techniques every single time, and and then you can use those later on. And but you know one of the things that has really useful for me is like I said, I kind of define it up front, and so it's not that I have the way that I write a track and I do that every single time, but rather like for, literally for this session, these are my constraints. And, um, and, and really I think what it does is it just, it gives your brain something to work off against. It's, it, you know, just, it sets up a question, it does whatever, but it, it you know, it, start, it starts it working and saying, this is a problem to solve. You know, the problem is how do I write a track with one drum machine and one synth, you know? Um, 
and you know, and, and you go to work on it. And so, like, one of the things that I've really discovered is that I, I can set up the environment for me to do something cool. Um, so, like the you know, like Ableton, any kind of software, you can always change it on the fly, and that's really cool when you need to. But also, you can just kind of take five or ten minutes to set up the environment and say that's not going to change. And now I'm just going to play in that for the next 40 minutes and see what happens. And then you take a little break and, okay, change the environment a little bit and say, now what's, what's the different outcome when I just tweak the environment just a little bit, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm, really. I'm, hearing, I'm hearing in the way that you're talking, I think, because I, you know, I know what it is that you do in, in real life, in inverted commas, and I'm <laughs> hearing but by your approach to this, that in, in, in what you do. Could you just tell everyone what it is that you actually do in real life, your, your job? Yeah, sure. So, so I'm a computer programmer, yeah. and I also do a lot of education around it and, and training and stuff too. So, and yeah, you're you're totally right. Um, I one of the things that attracts me to 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 software and technology and stuff is this idea that um, that that one thing can be very abstract and represent a lot of stuff. Um, and that happens in, in your music environments. You set up the environment to play in. It's very abstract, and then you just kind of set it up however you want and let it run and you know and then you can change it and, and there's a lot of power there um, and I you know it's kind of silly but I love the idea I think that like the sample is the ultimate currency or the you know ultimate common denominator that if we have one megabyte sample you know we can each fill that space it, you know, however we want and it doesn't really matter um, at the end of the day whatever is in that sample you know that record however it sounds that's what matters you know yeah. Um, yeah, and I see a lot of kind of parallels between how you make music as an individual in the creative process um, and how teams, you know, make it. You got mixers and producers and artists and stuff. And in software, same thing. You have many different roles. And so I I like, I'm, I'm seeing one of the things that has really got me latched on to music is just seeing it as another area of study or another way of understanding the world and understanding how to interact with people and, and work on stuff. And so, you know, as I'm starting to see things through a more musically oriented lens, I'm able to kind of combine that with my, my work, you know, my programming work and, and other interests in my life and kind of see these patterns and the, and the core principles that, that start to unify stuff. So, so um, you know, one of, one of the side benefits of finishing your music and, and moving forward with your music is that it's actually informing what you're doing in other areas of your, uh, other areas of your life as well and vice versa. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. I, I think a lot of people uh, tend to kind of compartmentalize their life into all these different areas, and it's yeah. and, and they have this kind of uh, when you think about it, completely ridiculous idea that they're in no way connected. That you know, yeah, one thing, yeah. And, and, and that's one of the things that I. One of the reasons that I do what I do the way I do it is because I view everything as being completely the same thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and those those compartments are completely artificial that they're, 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 they're sort of created um. and, and you also do yourself I think you can do yourself a really big disservice there um, by just there can be a lot of fear that that comes at least so I'm gonna speak just for my case but like you know for a long for a long time I didn't want to tell anybody that I was working on music you know I, I played piano and I've been playing piano for a long time but you know people would say are you a musician do you record now no. you know I had this this whole studio studio but you know my little room here like for for about three months I wouldn't let any women come in here because I didn't have enough music to just I didn't feel like I had enough music to justify this stuff and so I didn't want you know I didn't want a girl to come in here and see everything go oh, let me hear all you know, it's completely the opposite of what you would ever want, you know, and, 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 but I think a big part of that was, was, was keeping them separate and not seeing all the, you know, all the strengths that I do have from my life, you know, from the 28 years that I've done up to this point. So, okay, what can I use? What is unique about me that I can use in my music and how does studying music change how I can, how I can do other things? So I, you know, I think that the, the idea that, that it, it's, they're going to be, re that music's related and that studying it is just, if you can abstract it a little bit and say it's studying a field, then, you know, then it can relate to, to a bunch of everything else. And, and so I've been really appreciative of your focus of that in the course. So where you're like, you know, this is a little bit weird or this might be a little woo woo. I'm like, all right, let's go there. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, cause at this point, like I'm, 
you know, I'm a little smarter than I was 10 years ago and I'm not worried about stuff. I'm not worried about somebody thinking I'm weird. And I go, I, I know that I know that studying this thing makes me smarter over here. I just have to put things together. You know? yeah. And I mean, it's not just like my work in music, you know, like music and cooking. I mean, my music and cooking are so similar to me. It's crazy. I'm just like, you know, I'll make a bunch of little ingredients and store those for a week. And then when I want to cook, I throw the four ingredients together and that takes 10 minutes, but I got a killer meal. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, and yeah, and exactly. And then I use the leftovers and use that in, in some other meal. Well, you know, music can be kind of similar. Just spend a week making ingredients, put them together, and and then you got a song. You know, and so if somebody says, "Well, music and cooking aren't related," well, that, that, that's your choice to not see how they relate. Yeah. Um, and I don't have anything else to say yeah, about no, that. But I mean, and, and the other thing, <laughs> the other thing is one of the things I tend to focus on uh, is. So you've got music and cooking. So that's what I call like the, the content of what you do. And then mm -hmm. there's um, the, pro the mental processes you use in order to do those things. And I find that by, um, certainly in my life, in my music, uh, when, when I did it, and now in, in what I do now, um, by focusing on the, uh, the, the mental processes you use to do whatever it is you do, almost without reference to those things, um, although, although you can. Um, has such enormous benefits in, in kind of uh, in, in ways that you can't really explain until you start doing it. That um, it's it's almost like uh, I kind of have this ideal of living a kind of content-free life where I don't really think too much about the content and all, and I just want to think about the process of how am I thinking about this and how am I actually um, applying you know the, the way that I'm thinking to what I'm doing yeah. and what I'm doing is almost like the byproduct if, if you know what I mean. Um, that's, that's something on a personal level, that, 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 the, the way I think about things. I tend to think about the processes more than I do the, the well, actual stuff. And certainly any time you get to a certain level of performance, that's basically what you have to do. Because you get to a certain point where you're in untread territory. You know, you're, you're not doing something where somebody can just hand you some steps and say, okay, do this and this is the guaranteed outcome. Um, you know, obviously not with music, but and certainly like in, in my work, you know, there's people hire me to solve hard problems and it's not you know it's not stuff that that there's just a simple solution for and so when you're doing that that means two things one you don't know what the outcome is going to be necessarily of something that you do you you can kind of predict it and say yeah there's a good probability that this happens but you know there's a good chance of failure um, and and so it becomes really important to both you know think think about like how the way that you're going about something and then also reflecting on it and incorporating that back in kind of separating you know from your thinking from the results and say okay did I do things the right way here and you know maybe maybe it just didn't work out this time but um, but if I change everything that I do because it didn't work out this one time I might end up screwing myself completely so it, you know and that's a kind of a big thing for me in this course has been perspective takes some time and and you need you just need to finish stuff and listen to it later. Say, okay, was that good? Was that bad? And you know, and when you're too close to it, you're not going to be able to. And so, you know, that just kind of idea of, of really focusing on how how you work and saying, you know, as long as you're improving that, the results will come over time. You know, you're going to see you're going to see improved outcomes over time. Um, but if you're yeah. that's that's exactly. I think the um, the focus. On a kind of micro level, in the sense of each individual tune, it's like um, I mean, people come into the program all the time, and understandably, they say one of my goals is to finish X number of tracks that I can be proud of, or that that, that um, I would be happy to blah 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 blah. And that that is absolutely understandable. I mean, that is the goal of uh, you know I, I, of everyone. But what, one of, one of the things I often say is uh, that the, the, one of the definitions of a great music producer, or in fact, a great anything, but let's keep it to music, um, there we go again. Yeah, so a, a great music producer is um, that they are never happy with what they create because that's the thing, it's again, it's the gap, it's, it's, it's yeah. the gap thing. That's what the thing, that, that's the, uh, the, the coal that goes on the fire, that, 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 it's that they are not happy with it. So, uh, and, the, and the other thing is that um, because you are the producer of something, that means you have extremely skewed and you always will have even even after time you will have an extremely skewed view of what it is um, yeah. and it's almost not really uh, I'd even go as far as to say it's not really your your place 
to say whether it's good or not. And it even oh, kind I... of <laughs> it kind of doesn't matter whether you think it's good or not. Yeah. In, in another sense, what matters is what. <clears throat> You know, other, you know, it's it's what the world thinks, or, or 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 I mean, not that that not that you should necessarily care about that. Um, that's not what I'm saying at all. But it's almost like a a great a, you know, a great music producer will put it out and let it be judged, and uh, um, um, not by themselves. I mean, the yeah. number of times I finished tracks which I well, I didn't I didn't finish them. I didn't think they were finished. Then other people told me they were finished, and I. They, they were people who I trusted, by the way. I didn't just <laughs> put it on SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let someone tell, I'm talking about people who I really trust, and they said, no, this is, this is awesome. And they always turned out to be the, the tracks that, that did the best, even though at the time I was like, like oh, man, it's just terrible, or, 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 or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's... What, one of the things I wanted to ask you, because uh, you kind of touched on it before, and it, I think it would be really valuable for people, is you, you said it a couple of times in that you... Um, when you said when you were starting, you know, producing music, and you weren't sure of the result, so it's like um, you, you went into it and you you were spending all this time, and you didn't know what the outcome would be. Now, for some people, I know that that kind of level of uncertainty is kind of a big brick wall. So what yeah. I want to know is what is it that you did? What do you do in order to um, get over that idea, you know, it's like, well, I don't know whether this is going to work or not, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. How, how do you think about, what do you do? Wow, that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, I guess I, the, the first thing is I would say that I'm maybe uniquely, like, I'm very comfortable with uncertainty. Um, I, you know, we, I'm going through your monthly program now too, and you talk about safety and security. Well, like I dropped out of college to play poker. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so as for like safety and security hadn't really been number one one for me, and obviously like gambling for a living, um, there's a lot of uncertainty. So, so just kind of com being comfortable with that. But then also um, in, in my work, and also I've met a, a good friend of mine who I introduced you to some of his work recently, where he talks about objectives and outcomes, yeah. and and shows that that. Uh, outcomes are interesting and valuable and you can't always predict them. Um, and he talks about them in, in, in game, in the context of game. So ob objectives will be in the context of a game and by playing that game and achieving that objective, you, you know, you generate different outcomes. And so I j the example that he uses is soccer. The objective of football, if you live in one of the non one countries of the world that calls it soccer. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, you kick it on to a goal, pretty simple, but you, you play that game millions, billions of times and you get things like the World Cup and, and UEFA and, and Lee's on some these are outcomes. Um, in music, you can kind of, you can see how that applies where like if I have an objective of creating a song, outcomes might be that I create five different instruments and, and patches and I learn new stuff and I save new samples to my sample library. Um, I play it for a cute girl at a bar and now I have a date with her on Thursday night and I play it at a club somewhere and somebody hears it and now I've got a show booked halfway around the world. So you never know what the outcomes are of stuff. You, you can know what some of them might be, but, but the value is in the outcomes. That's where the interesting stuff is. So, so one of the... Um, you know, so getting over that uncertainty is 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 just saying like the setting the objective of I want to finish a song, and then saying I don't know what the outcomes will be, but I know that they've got a good chance of being interesting or valuable. So let's see what those are. Um, and you know, that's that that's kind of the whole taking action stuff. You know, is that I I don't know the version of me that has toured around the world. You know, playing playing shows everywhere, but I bet he's pretty cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so why not meet him? You yeah, know, exactly. and and the way to do that is, is just make a lot of music. And, and um, um, <laughs> I mean, do you, you know, do you see now that that if you choose, if you choose that path, do you see that that is possible? And I don't know what your answer to this is going to be. I, I've got no idea. I don't know whether you're going to say yes or no. I don't, I don't know. Oh, it's totally possible, and, and and it's it's totally going down. I feel it, it's a little funky because you know I was totally unknown prior to this video, but, but now all the Dons out there, you guys know I'm coming for you. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but, 
But yeah, totally. And like I, you know, I it, like I said, it feels really weird because I'm the more I do, you know, I'm like I'm so early on. The more I do, it's like the more I learn, the more I realize how much there is for me to learn. You know, it's like it's like playing Minesweeper where you click one thing and a whole bunch opens up, but now you see that there's so much more stuff that you don't actually know. Um, and but I think that things are gonna be. I think if we do another video call in a year or two, that, that things are going to look a little different. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll make it a date. We'll put it in the diary right now. Well, thanks very much for this, Pat. It's been absolutely awesome to. There's been some like incredibly valuable stuff uh, in this interview. Um, it's um, it's brilliant to see how much how much you've come on. And yeah, we will do this interview. Um, can I say Can I say one thing that I think is useful takeaway? Um, is, is, is for anybody that's kind of interested in doing this, um, when you do it, look at and really see what's unique about your own experience with making music. Um, that's been a big takeaway for me and being able to con connect with myself and stuff in my past. Um, because like I know that there were a couple months where I was just up late at night thinking, I don't know if I should be doing this. Like, what am I, am I spending, why am I spending all this time? You know, where is it going? And thing like, I live in LA. There's, you know, there's millions of amazing musicians here. You know, I'm a damn good computer programmer, but you know, I don't know about this music stuff. Um, and just feeling really down. And then, and then I was clicking through my iTunes, and I then started listening to a recording of me and my high school choir. Um, and that triggered all these things of like singing in church, singing in school plays, you know, going on camping with my dad and stuff and music. And all of a sudden, like, I just got the sense that, okay, like, like music is there and, and really is really meaningful for me. Um, and, you know, and that's not something that anybody could have told me or, or could have said. And it took a while, you know, for me to, to, like, I have had all this music in my life and I have done a whole bunch of stuff. And even still, I felt like, ah, you know, is this really me? Um, and so I would say, like, for anybody that's going in, just look at, you know, what, what's unique for you and how can you connect this to, to other stuff in your life and see, um, because, because that's how it can become really powerful. And it doesn't, you know, it's not the music, so, like, just a thing to, to waste some time, you know? Like, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. There's a reason that humans have been doing it ever yeah. since it was found. The reason why so many people want to do it. So, you know, if... I think that if like if somebody gets interested in the program and sees the stuff, there's there's a reason that got them to that point in the first place. And now just look at look at it and connect it to yourself and say like what is you know what's special about me um, in, in my life and how it connects to music and, and where can I go from there with it? Absolutely. I mean, if when you do that, when you actually, uh, I mean, <clears throat> there's a couple of things that I noticed in that you were you were um, describing. I think what's it called the um, imposter. Um, a phenomenon. Imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. imposter syndrome, <clears throat> where everyone, pretty much everyone, and you know, including, you know, presidents of the United States and, and everyone, no matter what they're doing, always they ha they have this feeling that they're an imposter in some way, and that you know, what, you know, should I be doing? It? Am I a musician? You know, um, uh, you know, every, everyone, absolutely everyone has it, um, and it's it, th that feeling does not mean that you shouldn't be doing it. At the end of the day, um, it's a choice. Yeah, whether you you are a musician or whether you're not a musician is your choice. That's that's that <laughs> you are allowed to choose it. You know, it's not something that is bestowed upon you. Absolutely. Um, and um, when you make that choice, one of the best ways of becoming the best musician you can be is by uh, realizing that you are a unique individual, and therefore you can be a unique musician as well by t bringing on all of those influences and, and as you say, connecting it to yourself. So yeah, I mean, this is um, yes, yes, another pearl of wisdom from the lips of Pat Maddox. So, <laughs> um, well, I'm going to really look forward to uh, the never-ending stream of music that, that's, uh, that, that you're posting on the forum. And uh, well, as I said, we'll we'll see you in about another year's time. Yeah, cool. Thank Mike. Thanks a lot for putting this program and the community together. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, no problem at all. It's uh, well, more than my pleasure. Yeah. All right. Take care.